Welcome to the Capricorn New Moon, organized by the, uh, the Capricorn New Moon webinar, organized by the 2025 initiative. We continue our cyclic meditation every month, focusing on one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We use the astrological potencies of every month to strengthen our meditation. And this month, as we enter the cycle, the new cycle of the moon, it's the new moon in Capricorn, we will focus on goal number one, no poverty. Every month we bring our focus, our group focus to the unique framework that was agreed in 2015 by the governments of all countries to help humanity to advance going forward in its path of evolution. We use uh, this gathering to expand our understanding of the Sustainable Development Goals, coming in a circle to share our understanding of each goal, bringing esoteric significance uh, of that goal, and meditating together using the power of the group meditation to make each goal even more magnetically potent, that they could inspire and lead world service everywhere in the world. So today, um, as we will uh, talk uh, about um, the goal uh, number one, uh, related to eradication of poverty in all the forms. Uh, me, uh, Katya and Rebecca will share with you some of our thoughts related to this uh, goal and to the astrological significance uh, of this month. So, um, Katya, Rebecca, are you here? Yes. Can, can you hear us? Yes, Katya, I can hear you. Rebecca? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear? Great. Yes, we can hear you, Rebecca. Thanks, Katya. Mm -hmm. Now, it's so interesting. When I was pondering on this goal, it's already a second, uh, second cycle. We de we're working with the goals, right? And I was thinking about my initial thoughts on that. And um, my initial thoughts were a long time ago on uh, this, on the meaning of poverty and uh, on the spiritual meaning of that and the, this whole understanding of the faiths. And uh, this year, I'm uh, more focus on the actual understanding of what poverty is. And um, those famous line, less than a dollar a day, I think, is that the, the line that Yvonne uses, right? A dollar sixty, I well, think. Well, uh... Dollar sixty now, right? <laughs> yeah. No, the, dollar this, sixty. This thre threshold of poverty is uh, uh, periodically been adjusted and uh, when I was preparing to do this uh, webinar, uh, the World $1. Bank now $1. refers actually to dollar ninety, yes, as a threshold for green poverty. Dollar ninety a day, yes. So the threshold is moving, but still, if if we think about the the difference between the actual the countries that you know, live in a way that you know, okay, dollar ninety two dollars, it's of course there are plenty of countries. For which it is 
money. But there are plenty of countries for which there's a cost of, you know, a cup of coffee, you know, on the way, and uh, not even that. So the difference between the understanding of what poverty is, and you ask the poverty is then, you know, the state subsidizes you and you have less than like $800 a month, you know, and at least in New York State. It's, um, it's such difference between that. So we need somebody to gap. To, to close that gap and to bring the understanding of the life of people who are living really at the edge of desperate life and the people who actually live and barely you know can connect to that. So I think UN is playing a huge role in that, but it needs to be supported and energized and vitalized. To, to create the understanding between those two. To me, that is one of the main goals. And now we are in <clears throat> Capricorn, Saturn just came in, and uh, that is the sense of life and fate coming in. And um, so I think it's a good moment to bring in the Saturnian energy to support the height of the vision and deep understanding of the depth of the matter, of the really life of people who are at the very, very, I don't know, edge of existence. They are fighting for the existence day to day to day through their whole life and um, support them with the understanding of their process of development in a way that will not harm them but really support their development and foster it, you know, as soon as, uh, as soon as it is possible and beneficial. And that, that was my thinking on that. So what do you, what, what, what was your focus, Rebecca? Um, I'm really interested in what you say about um, remembering back to when um, this goal was first discussed because I remember too that I was very dissatisfied with this measure of poverty in a quantitative quantitative way um, to a dollar ninety a day. I I thought that that's a ridiculous way of defining it, really, because um, as you say, in some countries a dollar ninety isn't even a cup of coffee, coffee, and in some countries it can buy more than that. So. Um, it, it's really trying to understand what poverty is. And there are there is work, a lot of work being done now about sort of trying to find definitions and uh, asking people who are in poverty what their definition of poverty is. And it's a very multi-dimensional thing. And, um, of course, it comes back to, um, you know, not having the basic needs um, to be able to eat and it's so closely interlinked with um, goal two and the whole um, idea of um, you know everyone being able to have proper nutrition and basic needs um, but it's much more than that as well you know it includes the whole um, disempowerment of this and disenfranchisement of this section of society and um, which occurs because of big power differential differentials and the um, uneven distribution of resources and power and people in poverty you know say that they feel voiceless they they cannot um, affect the way the system works that is oppressing them. So it's very multi-dimensional and it's not just about um, helping people or, you know, trying to bring people out of po poverty is not just about giving other people resources. It's actually about trying to change the system so there isn't a group of people called the poor. <laughs> um, so it's seems a very, very big um, topic to me. <laughs> I 
it's interesting when um, we, uh, if we look the official statistics uh, of the World Bank and the United Nations, um, there is a amazing uh, decline in the level of absolute uh, poverty. Uh, I found, for example, uh, this uh, chart, uh, you can see it on, uh, on the screen, uh, which shows that in the last uh, few decades, uh, in, the, in, in the last three decades, there is, was a sharp uh, decline in the, uh, the poverty level compared to the, in the, the total growth of uh, um, population on the planet. And uh, uh, according to the World Bank, in 2015, the uh, level of poverty the, for the first time uh, declined lower than 10% of total population, people living uh, in, the, in the poverty, extreme poverty. And it's, it's a big accomplishment uh, on, on one level. Uh, but if you look in the nature of poverty and the reasons in poverty, conflict is one, uh, it's number one uh, reason of uh, poverty. Countries that are prone to uh, conflicts have uh, extreme levels of poverty and since 2015 actually if you see that they, they're not uh, just countries but they are like entire regions fell into the conflict so this number is not really showing the the, the real dynamic another, another um, um, one of the factors that contribute to poverty is uh, uh, extreme weather events and uh, uh, weather uh, cataclysms. The country that uh, under, underwent uh, such events uh, in, in, the last, in the recent years, they also not here in these um, statistics. And so if we think about this dynamic, if we think about the structure of poverty, we are actually on a very Mm, I would even use the words frightening trajectory because uh, with the climate change and with the rising uh, insecurity in the world, uh, the poverty can jump back to the levels that it's been uh, decades ago very easily. And even though the uh, amount of finance that is available now for uh, to support poor countries and uh, all sorts of programs to support poor people in those countries, they, for the first time, they exceed uh, the, the demand. What's traditionally been seen as the way out of poverty, just financial support from the rich countries, that's not going to work anymore. And. Uh, this is another graph that I've encountered and it was a very interesting discovery for me. It's, it, this is the graph that um, uh, was presented in the uh, Brookings Institute research uh, published a couple years ago. That's uh, in the last decade was the first time that the foreign aid exceeded actual cost of closing the power. But it's Poverty is something that money cannot address anymore. And that was a big dis uh, discovery for me. Now, I just was thinking about the, the words that, you know, that Rebecca used, you know, needs. <clears throat> and uh, that is, I think, one of the issues that also you mentioned is the needs are different and uh, whatever level of life is acquired when it drops down it creates this you know maybe not financial poverty but this inner state of poverty like what happened with the Soviet Union after you know after the collapse of Soviet Union people and switch over to this capitalistic system um, 
a lot of people who used to have very simple, completely un, uh, you know, uh, unspoiled, like no, no, really bare, very bare, very simple life. But they were able to do that, you know. In the change of economics, all of a sudden they couldn't, you know. And mm -hmm. things that were given, you know, uh, for like taken for granted, and even with the very bare again necessary medical help and uh, education, when everything became slowly, but it became, you know, you need to pay for it. It, it, it created a huge amount of problems for people who are well educated, which is again a very new thing now, because the phenomenon because of the former Soviet Union, because they're very well educated people, but they, they don't have enough and uh, they can't provide for their families. And uh, they, um, that is also an issue. So the question is how to meet that level of need with a minimum need and uh, this fluctuating need, you know, sometimes in you know, a potable water, you know, like Bangladesh, you know, the country I think is experiencing serious drought and, you know, people are really flooding because they can't, you know, find not even decently you know with regular living but they just can, can't live there at all so this variety of needs and multi-dimensional needs how they can be met and the resources not only financial as you said but creative creative thinking creative solutions and uh, repairs of what you know um, developed countries took advantage of, and now it is in a pretty bad shape, including environment. Yeah, I think it's really interesting in terms of trying to come up with creative solutions or and so relevant what you said Alexander that it's not just about money it's not just about throwing money at you know people giving money even we talk about goodwill and sharing and um, there, there is a lot of goodwill of people who do give and there are some great organizations that are doing wonderful work I think a lot of it though is the the way that we think and see the world and um, to be able to open up our minds and um, really work different solutions and really think about these things and um, because we have systems in place, capitalistic systems and systems of conflict that um, sustain the capitalistic system, um, it's all of that needs to be transformed and I guess we can um, connect in with the Capricorn theme again with with the whole idea of structure and we have these structures that are imprisoning the flow of goodwill and energy and justice and um, spiritual energy across the whole um, of humanity and they need to be broken down and we need to find the new structures that are going to allow this um, flow to happen and you know I think um, the money meditation is a great example of you know the what we need to do we need to actually think about and be able to visualize that the structures that are that are trapping and diverting the resources from from the realization of the plan for humanity are um, you know to be able to visualize them as we do in the money meditation actually um, becoming available and that 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 um, coagulated energy to dissolve into a free flow that's channeled 
um, in, you know, with purpose and intent to, to help people to, to make resources available to humanity at large. Um, and I, I think it's really interesting. Um, Lorraine Flowers mentioned Charles Eisenheim in one of the webinars, and I um, have been looking into his work a tiny little bit. I have his book, and it's actually quite hefty and complicated, but there's a really nice quote in here that I'll just quickly read in relation to this. Um, he says, indeed, we live in a world of fundamental abundance, a world where vast quantities of food, energy and materials go to waste. Half the world starves while the other half wastes enough to feed the first half. In the third world and our own ghettos, people lack food, shelter and other basic necessities and cannot afford to buy them. Meanwhile, we pour vast resources into wars, plastic, junk and innumerable other products that do not serve human happiness. Obviously, poverty is not due to lack of productive capacity, nor is it due to a lack of willingness to help. Many people would love to feed the poor, to restore nature and do other meaningful work, but cannot because there is no money in it. Money utterly fails to connect gifts and needs. Why? And he goes on further in the chapter to talk about um, the con the conception of scarcity that is central to economics and he speaks about how people who have less money they've done studies and people who have less money and less resources are often a lot more willing to share and people who have more resources are less willing and and he it's not pointing a finger at people you know, with with more resources, it's actually speaking about this concept of that um, it, it, scarcity that the economy is based on, that we won't have enough, so therefore we have to um, have a big nation or have lots of money in the bank to be safe. And it, it's interesting. I think it's important for us to expand our minds to try and think about what are the ways of thought that are getting embedded into the systems of the way things are done that are creating this inequality? I want to invite uh, people in the circle, in our virtual circle, to join our sharing. So for that, just please raise your hand and we will unmute you. It would be great to hear more voices uh, as we prepare for our meditation. Uh, I very agree with you, Rebecca, about this uh, opportunity, not just this month, of course, of the Capricorn, but of the period, this uh, next few years and next decade, which will be covered by this current astrological transit that Katya mentioned of Saturn and that entered Capricorn. and. Uh, Saturn being a ruler uh, or double ruler of Capricorn brings, uh, brings amazing potency uh, to the energy of Capricorn. And especially when, Cap uh, when Saturn will be joined with Pluto that's transited uh, uh, now through Capricorn and been there already for a while and will stay there longer, that will signify the breakdown of old structures. And uh, if we think about this current world order, uh, this system will be forced to go transformation. And uh, I absolutely agree that there is abundant resources there, in, in, not, if, if not abundant, but there is enough for everyone. So the new system that could emerge would be based on the idea of sharing. At least that's what we meditate for and that's what we hope for. So it's about distribution of the resources that it would be enough for everyone. And as we meditate in this time, in these years, that's something that we could 
hold in vision that there is a need for such effective system of coordinating and distributing resources that would satisfy the basic needs of everyone. And um, if I can add a little bit, there is also the component that um, needs to be kept in mind that this is the slowly sensing humanity as one. Because a lot of this, like developed, non developed, you know, countries, you know, first war. Yeah, third world. Katya, we, we cannot hear you well. There is problem with the connection on your end. You know, it's we apologize for the problems with the sound. Uh, I hope the, the, the connection will be restored on Katya's end. Hello, Katya. Um, yes, so uh, we hope she will be back. Um, meanwhile, uh, uh, Rebecca, there was a question from uh, Eliza or request from uh, uh, to repeat the name uh, of the author and title of the book that you should share. It. Yes, it's it's Charles Eisenstein. Um, do you want me to type it in the chat? Um, it's Charles Eisenstein, and the name of the book is sacred economics yes. I'll just type it in um, the other thing um, are we still talking are there other people that need to say things and um, so far, I don't see any raised hands, so yeah, we, we can just continue our sharing, preparing for the meditation. The other thing that I just wanted to share in relation... Have... Sorry? Hmm? <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, in relation to the <laughs> what I said earlier about um, just the idea of that... Um, well, the sharing that we're talking about and that if we keep on thinking of people as the poor and this idea that, you know, there, there are many people that want to give and that want to give to the poor, um, but if we keep on thinking of the poor, um, we're creating this kind of divide still. And I just wanted to mention an organisation that came to my attention through one of the members of our group um, which is the Wayside Chapel in King's Cross in Sydney, which is a wonderful place where um, that gives support to people who are um, in poverty and experience not belonging and who live on the streets and all sorts of things. But one of the um, really special things that they do about in their work, they have this motto, um, I think of it um, a world where there is no us and them is one of their um, you know part of their vision and they actually practically action that by um, they have they do all their work and they have their coffee shop and they have um, people who who are homeless that that use wayside as a, a place to be and become engaged and but they also run exercise classes for the mums and babies and things from the um you know 
more well-to-do suburbs next door. <laughs> and so what they're doing is they're really bringing together people who are having very different experiences to be able to try and break down those differences and have that sharing that will allow us to become more one. Um, and I think, you know, the whole thing about um, war and the inability for conflict resolution and the, or the need for it, the need for us to be able to have these kind of communication, peace building skills that let us cross barriers, that let us learn to listen to each other's experiences is also a really, and, and that can enable the building of more just systems um, is also a really, really important part of addressing the problem of poverty. Uh, Sharon, welcome to the sharing circle. Yeah, thank you. Thank, uh, this is a fruitful conversation. I just wanted to jump in ever so quickly to to um, echo a couple of uh, points that that I heard. You know, and, uh, and in fact, what Rebecca was just sharing um, it brings to mind uh, one of the things that we hear often at the UN because a lot of times you look at the problem. Uh, and you say, well, how, how are we going to fix this? And uh, one of the things, I think UNICEF says it, or UNDP, I don't, but they quote Einstein often, and, and he's quoted as saying, no problem can be solved on the same level that it was created. Mm. Which leads into what Rebecca was saying in terms of thinking that we're one, you know? And so when we stop uh, thinking of things in terms of me and them, or us and others, and we start thinking of it as we, uh, it, that might help us. And so we're really looking for a shift in consciousness, um, which is what uh, Doug Hamaschold said, that, that the UN cannot really fulfill its spiritual purpose without a spiritual renaissance. The last thing I wanted to share was that when the SDGs were being uh, defined, it was interesting to uh, hear the conversations that were going on between the quote-unquote developed countries and the quote-unquote less developed countries. And, and one of the things I heard that really went right to my heart was that uh, those that we would be considered uh, from less developed countries were, were saying, we are not victims, but we add mm. value. And, they, mm. and so they weren't necessarily saying, uh, stop you know, we're poor, so please help us. What they were saying is we add value. Please recognize the value that we can contribute to the good of the whole. And uh, I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. And then it's so interesting also to me that each of these SDGs, when we ponder them, uh, we can look at them from a global perspective. And then it seems as though if we take them and hold them really close to our hearts of uh, it has an individual implication as well you know and so i think it's so great that we're doing this under capricorn because we've got saturn that's always giving us the choice you know it's not just outer structures but it's our own uh discipline that we choose uh to um impose upon ourselves you know and then uh venus the star of the mother of the world is the is the spiritual ruler of Capricorn. It, it's calling to us um, to a life more abundant, and um, so I just I find it all very promising, and um, this conversation is very fruitful and, and hopeful in, in and of itself. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, there is definitely this um, to subtopic to do as we talk about poverty, and I wasn't sure how to bring this into the conversation. But what was continuously coming to me is uh, the aspect of spiritual poverty, and does it mean that people who are considered to be rich they uh, also rich spiritually, and countries uh, or people who are 
poor financially? Are they poor? Do you see what I mean? So there is this correlation is that even though there is emphasis on uh, financial poverty, but there is aspect related to the bringing the other dimension uh, to this. And uh, that's what you said. It's about, uh, we were talking about the, at the beginning about the needs. Like, do we, are we, do our needs uh, uh, really what we think we need? And there is this uh, aspect of the limiting of own needs through own, through the discipline that uh, you just mentioned, Sharon. And yeah. so there is this trajectory of as we evolve individually and as grouped, we come to the point of re-evaluating of what is actually like real um, need and uh, if wealth defines our poverty. Yeah, all this that's yeah, th that's yeah. very Capricornian, isn't it? Because because we climb the ladder in Capricorn, and, and at one point we're climbing, you know, to get more money, to get more material gain, and then mm -hmm. we recognize that the ladder we're climbing is is not the one we want to climb, you know. Yeah, that's a, you know, uh, you know, the other thing, if if we think about what uh, the president of the United, the impact that the president of the United States is having on the UN. It's just oh so interesting because he's basically saying that he has the money and he'll give money if countries side with him. And then when they don't side with him, he takes away the money, which is you know very so he's on he's climbing another ladder altogether. But the the response of, of the countries I find to be very hopeful because the smaller countries are getting together and um uh, they're forming different groups within the UN. You know, you have the group of, of the nine aligned countries, the group of, of 77, which has, I think, now expanded to like 142 countries. And, and they're doing uh, some, you know, pretty, I, I think they're, you know, doing some some real work that, that we're not able to see. Um, it definitely doesn't make the headlines, but. I think it's going on and it's exciting. And it's being caused by the president of the United States. <laughs> uh, Iris, yeah. please. Hi, hi, thank you. This is a really wonderful discussion. I, I just wanted to bring in, I'm looking at the, uh, again, the guy education has produced these flashcards on the SDGs and I was just looking up number one uh poverty and it i wanted to relate it to the other goal a few other goals because so we know all the sdgs are interrelated and uh first is uh, number 11 which is sustainable cities and communities and how poverty and inequality leads to and i think rebecca touched on this um earlier uh, it leads to cultural segregation and different classes and privileged elites and underprivileged um, you know disenfranchised people so this erodes cultural cohesion and community resilience causing ill health and the risk of like a society breakdown then um Another goal is uh, goal 10, which it's it's kind of interesting. They say, you know, like poverty, it it can't be eradicated. It's not an illness. <laughs> you know, it's not we think about it. Let's let's wipe it out like it's a virus or something. Um, but it's the result of a structurally dysfunctional economic and social system. Like we have it set up on a win lose system where if we set it up on a win-win-win system so this this you know we can't address poverty without addressing inequality and um the economic the whole economic system because it's self-defeating and it, you know without 
address you can't address the symptoms without the causes then the uh, another goal is is quality education number four because quality education and access to microfinance schemes and global fair trade networks has proved um, very useful in reducing poverty. And then, of course, you know, I mean, you have SDGs 13 to 15, which are um, the environment, uh, life below, it's climate change, life below water, and life on land. And so, our vital ecosystem and its services and the bioproductivity on which all life survives, it, it's based on a wealth of a healthy ec ecosystem. So they're all connected. Just that, thank you. Thank you, Iris. I, um, again and again, uh, come back to this uh, diagram that uh, Sharon, you suggested us uh, during Scorpio and New Moon. And it gives such a um, beautiful visualization to the complexity of the uh, different issue. And there is no just, uh, exactly as you said, Iris, there is no one issue. It's not, it's not about, wiping out poverty it's 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 it sounds even strange uh it's exactly it's creating this system functional uh infrastructure system that would allow all countries together work for the advancement of humanity there is and that's then the reality of the one humanity. We need global functional system that will allow everyone to, to harmonize the, the lives of all together and every community in every country, every whole. <coughs> I think we can yeah. now go to meditation. Yes, Rebecca. There's you just to add one something? comment. Uh, uh, I have. I could always talk too much, but um, I, I won't say any more. But I just see that there's a comment in the chat box from Rebecca Frid. Um, do you want me to just read it, Alexander? Or? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. So, so Rebecca says. Um, money meditation each Sunday morning that the hierarchy holds the right distribution of money is such an important thing to bring to fruition that the hierarchy also needs money is a deeply esoteric mystery to ponder on. Yeah, I think, I think it, it's it's so true that we that we need the the money and the or some way of exchanging resources to to be able to um, make distribution possible, um, which is what really I think money is for, isn't it? It's a means of distribution, and and that's what we're talking about needing to distribute um, power and and physical resources to people so that needs are met. And I loved what um, Sharon said about the effect that um, the American president is having on um, the smaller nation's ability to unite and their motivation to unite. And um, the, also the comment that um, we, that every, one has value you know and whether what however 
it, it's so important for us to have that perception and learn to listen because then we can work together and make these solutions together by listening to each other's needs and coming up with um, systems that, that work for everyone. I just reposted the, 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 the correct version of Rebecca's uh, comment because I was, uh, I have to repost if uh, when someone uh, sends the, the, the yeah. comments, they don't, everyone doesn't see them every, uh, right, right away, so I have to repost them and I missed the beginning of the first sentence and Rebecca's comments are now it's like full sentence. It is significant that the hierarchy charges us to do a mining meditation each Sunday morning. Yeah. And mm. further, what you were back already about, yeah. I suggest we now use this created focus, uh, our group focus on this topic to uh, meditate together to strengthen the thought form of the UN Sustainable Development Goals and goal one in particular, taking into consideration all the sharing that we did so far. So let's refocus in the group center. Visualizing the flame of the group heart. Group fusion. I'm one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. alignment. We recognize our place as a group within the heart center of the new group of world servers. Mentally extend the line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy the planetary heart center. To the Christ, the heart of love, love within the hierarchy. And further towards Shambhala. Hold the mind focused for a few moments on the planetary role of the new group of world servers mediating between hierarchy and humanity, responding to hierarchical impression and meditating the plan into existence.
we bring our focus to the keynote of Capricorn. Capricorn, the light of initiation. This is the light which clears the way to the mountain top and produces transfiguration. Thus, We bring our focus towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Realizing it as a reflection of the divine plan. Helping humanity in its way of evolutionary advancement. We visualize as the energy of Capricorn flowing, flows through the UN SDG framework, magnetizing and empowering it. We bring our focus to goal one. Eradicating poverty in it all in its all forms everywhere.
Visualize the precipitation of the will to good, essential love throughout the planet, from Shambhala through the planetary heart, the hierarchy, through the Christ, the new group of world servers, through all men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world, and finally through the hearts and minds of the whole human family. low interlude. Consider the many ways in which the power of the one life and the love of the one soul are working out in the world through members of the new group of world servers, so building the thought form of solution to world problems. And as we stand as a group, realizing ourselves part of the new group of old servers, we visualize the irradiation of human consciousness with light and love and power. And we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let the purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men. Let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you for joining the circle and for our work together today. Our next webinar will be on January 28th. The Sydney Goodwill Unit from Australia will focalize the Aquarius Solar Festival webinar, bringing our collective focus to the topic of goodwill and group alignment. Thank you.